as we have read yesterday about this chapter sermon at banaras that what was this sermon this sermon was given sermon means religious talk okay who has given it it was given by the great saint gautam buddha mahatma buddha has delivered this sermon and in this sermon sermon what he has talked about he has talked about death okay that death is inevitable okay so what he has talked about the main point he has talked about is that death is inevitable what is the meaning of inevitable it means that it can never be avoided okay so what does it mean it means that death can never be avoided it is a part of our life everything that has got its birth it has to perish away perish away when it perishes away means it means that from where it has taken its birth it has taken its birth from that of you can say from that of this soil and ultimately it will go again back into the soil only so this is what mahatma buddh has told about you can say he has told about you can say reality of life so he has given this or he has overcome this fact with the help of an example from kisa gautami whose son was dead she was moving from one house to in order to in order to procure mustard seeds as said by gautam buddha he has told her to procure mustard seeds so that so that that so that he could make his son revive actually by this example he wanted to tell her that she will to get any seeds from any house where no friend no husband no father no mother was that it means that death is of course you can say an important part of life so now while giving this example he has talked about upon some major themes of life so what he has told he has also told that life of mortals that life of mortals mortals means human beings because we are prone to death after you can say living a life we are ultimately going back from where we have emerged into the soil so life of mortals is full of pain and suffering now then afterwards he has also compared human beings to ripe fruits and earthen pots so he what he has compared means like as a fruit which is ripened ultimately it has to fall back it has to detach from the from the tree from where from the tree from where it is growing and ultimately the earthen pots they are ultimately doomed to be broken so that they are produced from that soil and they will be a part of that soil only so he is saying that not even kinsmen or their relatives they are able to stop they once to avoid that death okay to lament over death of course we feel grieved we feel you can say sad but this doesn't mean that we will lament over for long time but ultimately the cycle of life it has to be carried forward because life is ultimately what life is ultimately or another name of life is just going on right so the last line of the second para is so the world is afflicted with just a moment so the world is afflicted with death and decay therefore the wise do not grieve knowing the terms of the world so the wise what they should not do they should not grieve knowing the terms means the wise people they did never grieve because they should know the terms of the world knowing the reality of the world 
not from weeping nor from grieving will anyone obtain peace of mind yes so what the next point is featured here it is featured here that not from weeping means if we will weep if we weep a lot and if we grieve a lot grieve a lot means if we will feel sad a lot no one will obtain peace no one will get peace that means there will not be attainment of peace of mind on the contrary his pain will be greater and his body will suffer so if a person grieve if a person will lament what will happen that will lead to more suffering that will lead to more pain the person will feel will feel more pain in his life he will make himself the greater and his body sorry he will make himself sick and pale yet the dead are not saved by his lamentation see here what great thing means sometimes it happens that when our near and dear is lost so what happens yes of course untimely death untimely death of course it causes a lot of you can say pain in our hearts but this doesn't mean that we will keep on lamenting we will keep on grieving because if we will grieve if we will feel sad then what will happen we are making ourselves sick we will make ourselves sick and pale we ourselves will turn out to be more sick because the pain in the heart is of course another main reason of a person's suffering so this will definitely tell upon your health it will definitely affect your health yet yet the dead are not saved by the lamentation but one thing is that we should always remember that by lamenting by feeling sad over the you can say over the death of our loved ones our our you can say our lamenting our crying our weeping our you can say grieving it will never it will never bring our dear ones back because death is a natural process what has taken birth it will ultimately to be dead so he who seeks peace should draw out the arrow of lamentation and complaint and grief so he who seeks peace means he who seeks means who wants peace so the person who wants peace what he should do he should take out that arrow of lamentation that arrow of lamentation means a uh, means that lamentation that grieving he should take out that arrow of lamentation complaint and grief out of his you can say life <clears throat> why it is called as an arrow it is called as an arrow because it is ultimately affecting your life if this arrow is you can say it is pinned down in your life then ultimately you will never be able to grow you will never be able to come out of that kind of suffering so he who has drawn out the arrow and has become composed will obtain peace of mind so he who has drawn out that arrow so the person who has drawn that arrow of grief and suffering out of his life who has drawn out that pain out of his life has become composed means composed means he will become a person of poised personality very balanced personality the person will become quite balanced and and what will happen and he will obtain peace and only that person only that person will be able to attain peace otherwise the other persons they will what they will feel they will ultimately feel the suffering of life they will ultimately be affected by the suffering of life so one should what one should do one should take out that arrow of suffering from one's life and it is only it is only by taking out that arrow of suffering that a person will obtain peace otherwise in life there is no way out to attain peace and who has overcome all sorrow will become free from sorrow and be blessed so this is the ultimate rule in our life that how we will be, how we will become blessed and how we will be free from sorrow so how we will be free from sorrow it means we will be free from sorrow if 
how we will be free from sorrow if we will take that arrow of suffering that arrow of suffering if it will be taken out of our you can say life out of our mind only then what happen that we will be able to attain peace and in this manner we will be blessed also how we will be blessed means that we will be blessed with the uh, with the you can say with bounties of life that moment that moment when we will understand this reality of life that what actually life is that life is actually the name of coming and going we should not take it take it in the manner that we have a permanent place in this world because ultimately you know that the time will come you know suppose a person lives for 100 of years 100 of years by the time naturally by process of aging the person will definitely the person will definitely be an aged one so as the person will be an aged one then what will happen he will have less control over his body he he will not be able to work and ultimately what kind of life that will be that will be just spent on bed okay it will not only it will not only make the life of the person or or make the life of the person sorrowful but of course the near and dear ones who are attached with that person they it will also be difficult for them to take care of such kind of person so ultimately what will they will definitely pray for the death of that person so it means that everything has a proper time and according to it when a person is aging when a person ages when a person you can say is spending uh, or he has you can say he has spent lot of years like the fruit is ripened the person has to ultimately go to his heavenly abode and ultimately the person is dead and those persons those persons who have understood this reality of life which reality of life that death is inevitable one who has taken birth it has ultimately to go to you can go it has to ultimately going to be dead and this is this and ultimately you can say this reality of life makes the person life blessed and a loved one okay so i hope that the chapter is clear to you if you have any doubt in any line of the chapter just raise up your hands i'm just waiting for you so that we can proceed forward towards the discussion of the question answers i'm just giving you one minute you can have a reading and you can ask me your doubts so i haven't got any doubt from your side so i'm proceeding towards the discussion of the question answers of this chapter so first is when when her son dies kisa gotmi goes from house to house what does she ask for and does she get it and why she not get it yes raise up your hands to give the answer yes who will give the answer yes any student who will give the answer is there anybody who can speak this answer yes kanishka you can ask kanishka you can bhavna Bhavna is not here. Tripti, you are also a good student. You write very well. Can you speak for this answer? Oshin, yes. Come on. You are not in mood to speak. I think so today. Am I right? So let me discuss with you that what who. Her, when her son dies kisa got me she goes from house to house and what does she ask for so when her when kisa got me son died or when her son dies she is lamenting a lot she feels she never she is not believing this fact that her son was that she thought him to be sick and she thought that 
she is going from one home to another in order to get assistance to revive his son back or to give him some medicine so that he can be cured but ultimately what is the reality she was denying this fact that her son was dead so finally she was redirected by someone to go to sakya muni mahatma buddh and when she has gone there he has told him to procure mustard seeds from a house Um, uh, Mr. Seeds from a house, but the condition was that nobody, not even a mother, father, friend, relative in the nearby or far away relation, should be dead in the house. So, in order to procure these Mr. Seeds from a family where no one is dead, she was going from one you can say house to another, but she was not able to find any house where no one is dead because there. death is a death is inevitable that death, death is inevitable or death is a part of part of life it is an important phenomena of life and anyone that has taken birth on this earth it has to be dead so it is just because of this reason she was going from house to house and why not why she was not getting because there was no house where no one is dead either <coughs> either in the nearby relation if not nobody is dead then in the far off relation someone is dead and people were asking her not to remind them of that grief that their family had suffered a lot because in all the houses live the persons living are few but the dead are more okay so this is the reason why she was not getting any mustard seeds from a house that she asked for as said by sakya muni mahatma buddh so clear this answer yes archita anshika yes anshika ma'am in this uh, if we see the text from the book it, it is written that um, she also first went to her neighbors asking the me medicine for his son this i told her she was she has gone i told in the very starting that she was going to different persons in the starting okay to ask for medicine in order to because she was not believing that her son was dead okay she was asking for medicine to cure him okay i have started and then we will mention both the things medicines as well as mustard seeds no medicine she was asking because she was not thinking that her son to be dead okay this is the reason when someone told her that no that uh, she should go to sakya muni mahatma buddh at that moment mahatma buddh has told him to procure mustard seed this is the reason why she was going to from house to house exactly this is to be written okay okay ma'am ah right so next is kisa got me again goes from house to house after she speaks with buddha yes now see so the in the first one if it will be asked if it will be asked not in any relation then you can write down that she Mahatma Buddh has told her to go from house to house in order to procure mustard seeds. But here, in both the contests are asked. Okay, first one is that she is going to her neighbor's house. Okay, in order to get medicine, in order to revive his son back. Okay, because she was not believing that her son was dead. Okay, so but in the second part, they have asked, especially they have asked when she speaks with Buddha, and what does she ask for for the second time? Then you can write down here. Okay. but if otherwise if it is not mentioned then you can mention any one of the things or both the things right so this is the difference okay so here for the second time so when when she was going from house to house in order to revive his son back to life as she was not believing that her son was dead then someone told him to consult sakya muni buddha okay so as as being consulted by sakya muni buddha then what happened she was asked to procure mustard seed from a house where no one is dead not a mother not a father not a friend or not a near and dear one from the family okay so so this is the reason she was going from house to house in order to procure mustard seed but whichever house she was going she was not getting those mustard seeds as as someone in the nearby or the far off relationship was dead okay and they and people according to people 
the living members are few but the dead are more so they were requesting her not to remind them of remind them of the pain the grief that they have suffered okay so this is the reason why this is the reason she was not getting any mustard seeds from the house wherever she was going clear this answer i hope that it is clear next one is what does kisa got me understand the second time that she fails to understand the first time so what she understood the second time yes who will give the answer can anyone speak yes so what does she understand so the first time when she was going from house to house she was not understanding and she was actually not accepting the reality of life that death is inevitable part of one's life and moreover death is an important phenomena of life she was not understanding but when mahatma bodh has told her to go from house to house in order to procure mustard seeds then at that moment what has happened at that moment she has understood the reality of life that she is not able to find even a single house where no one is dead so then she has realized her folly then she has realized how foolish she was to she was to uh, no how foolish she was not to accept the death of her son okay as she has also noticed the flickering of the lamps okay which were extinguished then she has made a comparison of flickering of dias or that of lamps with that of light that this you can say that this light of light which is at once very strong but with time it gradually flickers and ultimately it is put off similarly is our lives and that she has come she has uh, or she was dawned upon this reality that death is common to all okay and and ultimately ultimately in this mood of desolation okay in this life of or in this valley of desolation everyone has to suffer as man is mortal it if it has taken birth it has to be dead and in order to overcome this desolation one has to overcome his selfishness okay so very deep in a very deep manner means the answers to be written for this chapter okay it's a very deep chapter each and every line of this chapter it holds a very deep meaning okay so it should not be like that you are just writing only of the you can say superficial things which you have read okay this is the reason why i am talking with you i'm discussing with you this chapter this one page in such a you can say depth so that you will have content with you right and if you have any doubt you can raise up your hand side by side i'm still here to solve your problems so the next question is why do you think kisa got me understood this only the second time and in what way did the buddha change her understanding so what she understood why she understood it on only at the second time why she was able to understand it at the second time only yes why she was able to understand it at the second time only because she herself has experienced it she herself has the experience of life of all people she has analyzed exactly that while going from house to house when she was procuring some mustard seeds she was not getting those mustard seeds as there is not even a single house in the entire city where no one means where no relative no friend no father or mother or any son or daughter is dead that means that she has come to know this reality of life that death is of course inevitable part death is a natural phenomena means everything that has taken birth it has to be death or life of human beings it is afflicted with pain and suffering okay we cannot we should never and we can never avoid this pain and suffering whatever has taken birth it has to be it has to perish away so this reality she has understood when she was looking at the flickering of the lamps that those were illuminating the city so at that moment what has happened she she understood she uh, she understood the or she has compared okay though that flickering of light to that of 
reality of life that whatever has taken birth it has to be finished off it has to be put off as the lights they flickered and they were extinguished so she understood this only the second time when she herself has witnessed it okay because when a person experiences the things only then he will be able to understand those things and this is what exactly has happened with her okay and in what way did buddha change her understanding buddha who is who is you can say who is full of wisdom or who wants to tell her this reality but with experience he has he has told her to procure master seeds from a house where and we have no son daughter mother father or any relative or friend is dead so when she herself has experienced it she has gone from house to house she understood this reality that there is not even a single person in this entire world not who has not suffered this kind of pain and suffering then she has come to know the reality of life that death is inevitable any person who has taken birth must definitely he must definitely be dead and ultimately she has understood this reality of life that death is inevitable and whatever has taken birth it has come to an end right so understood this answer clear okay so and no doubt from your side so the last question we are going to discuss it tomorrow as 3 minutes are left and uh, uh, let me ask for your doubts because uh, it will take more time to discuss and i don't want this answer to be left in between so any doubt to any child if you have any doubt you can ask me